I get more than half a million page views across my websites on a monthly basis. And if you've been following my channel here for a while, you also know that I share my domains and the URLs publicly here. So you can learn from my mistakes and you can see what works for me. And one of the ways that I do this is by making sure that all the content I put out there, also the articles that went up last year and the year before that, has the best conditions of getting as much traffic to my site as possible. So before we dig into all the details on how I do that, I want you to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you know when I put out new content. I create a lot of videos that show you how to make money with your blog and show you how to do practical SEO. But let's get started. The first thing I want to show you here is exactly how you can see what content on your site is slowly dying. You know, we can dig into Google Analytics and see what articles are starting to lose momentum and lose traffic in Google. We need to update those because many times it just takes a little bit of tweaking to make sure that people don't bounce off the website as soon as they land on these articles. It's just these little things, you know, that keeps people on the page because they see that this is fresh content, it's not outdated content. Let me show you here how to find these pages. Now we're inside Google Analytics here and I want to show you how you can find articles on your site that had more traffic a year ago than it has today. Of course, you can also set a longer time interval if you want to. For this example, let's just use one year as an example. So up here, I'm looking at the last 30 days and I'm comparing to previous year. Let's click apply. And the report we're looking at here is under behavior, site content and landing pages. And we also want to make sure that we're only looking at organic searches because you might have a spike from Reddit or Quora or a form or whatever or Pinterest, of course. So we want to click to organic traffic. So we're only seeing pages that lost traffic from Google, right? All right, so now we're all set. So let's go down here and sort these pages by number of sessions. By clicking at the top of the column here, we're sorting everything. So we will have the articles with the most traffic over the last 30 days at the top here. So see this article here had 20,000 page views over the last 30 days. That's by far my best article on this site. That's a pretty amazing one. And the next one is having around 10,000 page views over the last 30 days. So as you can see here, those are newer articles. So they had less traffic last year. So we're going to look for articles that had more traffic here than here. So meaning that they had like, let's say 5,000 page views last year and now they're down to 2,000. We want to find these articles that lost traffic to see if we can optimize those. So let's scroll down here a bit. For this site here, most of the content is fresh new content. So here's a good example. This one had 633 page views over the last 30 days and last year over the same period it had 1,300 page views. So this is definitely an article to go back to and see if you can optimize it. Maybe the content in there is not relevant anymore, or maybe you just need to do minor tweaks to make this one pop in Google again. So go over all your content here once in a while and also probably set a longer time frame if your website is older. Let's say it's five or 10 years old. If you have a very old website, do this for a longer time period because you will have a stronger trend. You can also use a filter up here and include only sessions greater than 100. So now you'll only be looking at pages on your site that had at least 100 sessions over the last 30 days. And now you will sort this column the other way around. So you won't be looking at the pages with the most traffic over the last 30 days, but you'll be looking at the pages with the least traffic over the last 30 days. So by doing that, you might see the real losers here. And now you want to keep digging here until you find a page that had a lot of traffic last year. So this one here lost some traffic, as you can see. So this is a great tip if you have a huge website with a lot of articles on it. This website here is getting close to 600 articles. So it's great to sort one way or the other, just you know, to look at the most important pages, where you can do the most with the least amount of time. The next thing I want you to do is to pull up a list of all the titles for the articles you have on your websites. Many times we need to go back and update those it can be for many reasons. Many times it's just because it's too short or it's too long. And when you see them in one long column there, that's very easy if you use WordPress, you'll quickly see when you have someone that are too short or some that are too long. And maybe you have some that are outdated. Maybe you're showing some numbers from last year or you're showing an old year mark in the title. 
Many times it's just small quick changes you can do to a title that will make it rank much better in Google and attract much more traffic because the click rate will increase. Maybe you just typed in last year's date there and you need to update that. There can be many reasons why you want to update an old topic title. Let me show you here how to do it inside WordPress because it's really easy. Over here in the left column you just click on all posts and now of course you'll have a list of all your posts here. So let's say you're using Yoast or another SEO plugin, which I don't recommend by the way, but if you're using Yoast, make sure to click up here in screen options and tick the meta title little box here. So you will see the meta title because that will be the one showing in the Google results page, right? But if you're like me and you don't want to use an SEO plugin, you just update the real title of the article here. So now you just go over the list here and look for any title that is too short or too long or has like let's say it says 2018 and 2019 inside the title you want to update those so they look more fresh and are updated to the current year of course so let's see this one here for example nine reasons dogs shed extensively that's a pretty short meta title i could definitely come up with a better title for the google results page here it's just too short i think i could make it better by just adding a few more words to it make it a little more interesting for people i might also find some in here that are too long these ones here might be too long. I just want to check the character count on the longest ones as well. So go over this list here and this one, for example, what is a rimless aquarium? That's definitely too short. It's something that should be updated. But then again, it's just a draft, so it's not posted on my site. That's probably why it's so short. Crafting great and awesome titles that get a lot of clicks from Google is a skill that takes time to develop. It's not like when you register a blog or a domain, you just wake up and you have this new ability to write awesome titles. It takes time and you have probably learned a lot by now that you can utilize. So go back into these old titles and make sure that they are all up to speed and that you have used all the knowledge you have gained over the last couple of years. The next tip I have for you is to use a table of content plugin on your site. And if you're using Elementor, you don't need a separate plugin for this. It's built into that system. That's one of the reasons why I really, really love Elementor. There's so many things built into it. But there are two benefits from doing this. One, you'll take up more real estate on the Google search page. Notice these horizontal links here under the meta description. See how it takes up more real estate here in the search result page. That means more visibility to you, more clicks to you, which means more traffic and better rankings. And also when people end up on your website and they see the table of content at the top, they'll be able to go to the part of the article that they need to go to. And that's important when we're writing long format content. Remember, most articles we write today for SEO is 1500 or 5000 words long. So it's really important to help the reader get to the part of the article that they're looking for. Because you might be ranking for a ton of related stuff that's just buried deep down into the article. And in order for people to find it, you need this table of content. So that will give a better retention rate on your site. More people will stick around and less people will bounce off. And again, that's better rankings, more earnings for us. Because the longer people stay on the site, the more we can earn with the ads. The next tip I have is a little controversial and it's something that I always get some steam for saying. But I'm going to say it anyway. Delete your SEO plugins. You don't need Yoast and these types of plugins on your site anymore. I believe that Google has outgrown these plugins. Google don't need a lot of hand-holding in today in order to make sure that you have the best meta title and meta description and so on. Check this video up here where I show you exactly how I get more traffic without SEO plugins. It's true, it sounds weird, but it's actually true. Check out the video. The next tip I have for you is to go into Google Search Console and take a close look at which phrases and keywords you're showing up for, but you're not getting any clicks to it. That's a great way to improve upon some of your articles in order to put more content in there that people are actually looking for. Let me show you here how to do that. So we want to go into Search Console here and click on the Performance Report and take a look at the Queries column here and sort it by impressions. So you have queries with the most impressions at the top here. So see this one, Finker Monkeys. That's generating around 60,000 impressions, but very, very few clicks. So scroll down here to find something that's specific enough that you could probably rank for it. So for example, what type of fish is Nemo? I'm showing up 12,000 times and only 15 clicks here. So that would be a great 
title for an article. Just a little short article on that one could probably pull in a lot of traffic because you can see here it's generating a lot of eyeballs here but not a lot of clicks. So keep scrolling down here. This one also, for example, we showed up 7,600 times and only generated around 38 clicks to our site for the search term, which mammal has no vocal cords? So that's a good phrase to search, put it into Google and see what's showing up there. Check if there's a huge site who actually nailed this topic pretty well and got that number one position. But if nobody wrote a nice article about this one, check that out and maybe write that article because now you know that you could generate a lot of traffic because see 7,600 times you showed up in the search results just over the last three months as you can see up here. You can also set the time interval here to be longer or shorter of course. But I think the last three months is a good time interval. But if you had this article and you showed up at the number one position, you could definitely generate a lot of traffic. You also want to check where in the search result you're showing up. Let's say you're at the bottom of page two and you're actually generating 7,600 page views. Now you know that since people went to page number two in Google, they probably didn't find what they were looking for. So you have a better chance of beating those articles. So look up all these phrases inside. Google and see where you're appearing on page two or three or four and write those articles because the ones at the top on page one didn't get those clicks that went all the way to page two and three to see your article. You didn't get the click either, but if you wrote an article specifically about this, I'm pretty sure you could nail a lot of traffic here. This can be a real gold mine and way too many bloggers never log into Google Search Console. So if you do that, you'll be ahead of the competition. Remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell like I told you because I have much more tips coming for you. I love sharing tips like this with you guys. And also give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time.